So although it seems like the sneaker market is pretty saturated right now, um, there's new sneaker people that come into the market literally every single day. So this video is going to be geared more towards you guys that are newer to sneakers in 2018. And hopefully you guys like this video. What is going on guys, Hess here from collectivekicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. In this video, I just wanted to cover five essential tips that new sneakerheads should probably know coming into this whole crazy sneaker world. For those people that are subscribers already and seasoned sneaker vets, this probably isn't gonna mean anything new for you guys, but maybe some of you guys can relearn some of these things that we should already fundamentally know. So starting off at the number five spot, we have the temptations of becoming a reseller. Now, if you say reseller to a sneakerhead, there's lots of different reactions that you can end up getting because sometimes you'll get props and then other times people are gonna throw you shade and hate because of the simple word reseller. So I'm kind of somewhere in the middle because I'm like an older sneakerhead that understands like resellers make it difficult for you to buy at retail and somehow, some way we feel like our pair is literally taken out of our hands and out of our feet because a reseller bought them and is making money on them. But obviously on the other side, there's a lucrative limited supply and demand sneaker market that people can capitalize on and make good money from. All I can say is just have an open mind when you're coming into sneakers. But if you are interested in sneakers, mostly for this resale market, it's like any other limited supply and demand market. You do have to know your products. You can't just buy anything and expect to double your money instantly on that purchase. So some purchases are worth way more than others, obviously. And some of them you might think are gonna be worth something and you buy it and then all of a sudden, uh, you can't even get your money out of it when you go to sell it because the resale price is actually lower than the retail price. So just be careful out there. If you want to try to get into that market at all, you just need to do some research. Some sites out there can help you gauge the market like eBay. If you look at the completed listings before a sneaker drops, StockX sometimes has stuff like that, but there's ways for you to look and see what the going rate is on a pair of shoes before the release happens. Just know that after the release happens, obviously that's when the saturation hits and then the price points are gonna be lower. So you might see people selling something on StockX for $400 up until release, and then the release is a massive one, and then it's selling for 250. Don't be shocked to see something like that happen. And for those people that are getting mad at me for saying that I'm giving reseller advice, it's a reality that we do have to live with. And reselling is nothing new. If you look back in the olden days, I mean, if I could buy one to sell and buy one to keep, it's like kind of a no-brainer because you can kind of expense your way into becoming a sneakerhead, which, if you can be savvy and smart about it, more power to you. I think the reselling part that really hurts the majority of the community is when you see people from store managers backdooring 30 pairs to one person. That They're controlling the market a little bit at that point, and that's a little bit extreme if you ask me. But, you know, it is what it is. People do their hustles, um, and ultimately it relies upon the brands to make the corrections in the market in order for that to actually stop. There could be a way for these companies to be able to tag and track the products straight out of the factories into the retail stores and into the consumer's hands to make sure that that whole entire supply chain actually comes to fruition because it's really important that the consumer ultimately gets the product but not through some sort of crazy backdoor manager way from some store so they can pocket an extra $5,000 or whatever. So the number four tip I have for you guys is just to budget. It's really simple. Obviously, people should know how to budget. I'm not your parents. But budgeting is super important, and I've mentioned this in a, a lot of other videos, but maybe I need to bring it back and let you guys have a little gentle reminder. It is really important that you guys don't throw all your eggs in one basket. Make sure your bills are paid before you go buy sneakers. You don't need to go buy the sneakers before you have food on the table. Like, There's definitely priorities in life, and there's the foundation of uh, making a, an income and paying your fixed bills and making sure that those are taken care of before you can have the extras. Sneakers are absolutely an extra. You only have two feet, so you can only really wear one pair of sneakers at a time. So there's no point in going broke just to get a pair of sneakers because you think you have to have them. I know the feeling for sure because when a pair drops, I definitely feel like I have to have that pair of sneakers. But at the end of the day, if you miss one pair, another pair is gonna come out the next week that you really wanted. And then you'll forget about the pair you already bought and the next thing you know, you'll have two pairs that you probably won't even wear. So ultimately, just try to budget and be smart about the purchases that you make. Plan ahead if you can. And if you strike out on a pair, don't sweat it because there's probably another pair that's gonna be releasing soon. So my number three tip for the new sneaker people out there is to try to keep them clean. There's a lot of different sneaker cleaning products on the market right now. You can use soap and water, you can use your toothbrush, 
but try to keep them clean. But like I said, there's a ton of different sneaker cleaning products on the market. You can see I have a Rejuvenator shelf right behind me. This is my sponsor right here, Rejuvenator, and this is my preferred choice. If, if I was or wasn't sponsored by them, honestly, I'd be buying their product. Um, I really love these wipes. At any point when you get your shoes just a little bit too dirty on the sides or you step through mud or whatever, you can just wipe them down real quick with this. My other favorite from Rejuvenator is the laundry system. It comes with a bottle, a brush, and then a laundry bag, and then you can throw it in the actual wash after you get done scrubbing it down. It's like 30 bucks, but it's really well worth it. If you want to shop at Rejuvenator.com, you can save 10% off your order. Use code HESKICKS. But again, it doesn't really matter what sneaker cleaner you end up using, just try to keep them clean. So the number two essential tip for new sneaker heads has to be to buy what you like. Now I know this is one of those things that a lot of sneaker heads say, and you'll see it in threads all over the place. You'll see it on Twitter, people calling other people out for being hype beasts and telling other people, we'll just buy what you like. And, but what is it that you like? Now, there has to be some sort of an influence that got you into sneakers in the first place, whether it's a pair of shoes that your friend liked, that you saw that you ended up liking. I'm actually curious to see in the comment section what actually got you into sneakers or what shoe drew your attention first to sneakers to get you sort of to the point where you're actually watching a sneaker video like this. Leave a comment in the comment section. I'm super excited to read those comments uh, that you guys put in there. But it's pretty simple to state buy what you like, but it's a lot harder to actually understand what it is you truly like. There's a lot of external factors kind of helping you determine what you should be liking out there. Ultimately, it comes down to you as a person. You like certain movies that end up releasing. You like certain TV shows that you end up watching. Other people might like different ones. Sometimes everybody just likes them because it's something epic like Game of Thrones. But the more you see sneakers, the more you see them on feet, the more you wear them, the more you'll get a feel and, and a grasp for what it is you actually end up liking. Also, what you end up liking might end up shifting in the long run. So we made it to the number one spot, and if you guys are enjoying the video, hit the thumbs up button. It goes a long way, and it is appreciated. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Notification bell if you want to be notified when I post. So the number one essential tip for the new sneakerheads out there is it's not a competition. It really isn't. There's always going to be sneakerheads that have way, way more than you, and there's always going to be those people that have way, way less. Uh, it's important to make sure that you have that balance in perspective because you don't want to feel like you're trying to keep up with people that you can't because they just have way more than you. One, you always have to start somewhere. Two, again, it's just really not a competition. Just because somebody has more pairs of sneakers than you do doesn't mean they're a better person. It doesn't mean, it literally means nothing. It just means that they have more material things than you do, which in the end, it doesn't have an impact. You can't take your sneakers with you if you go upwards. You can't. It's one of those things that's really hard to get a grasp on, and especially if you're in high school or out of high school, grade school, whatever whatever point of your life that you're in, your coworkers, you try to compare yourself to everybody, right? You try to compare yourself to your high school classmates, and you see they have all these things and you don't, and you want to have all those things, but you can't. Like, it's the same sort of thing with sneakers. You just can't let it discourage you because you can't have everything that somebody else has. It's not, The grass isn't greener on the other side. Like, be happy with who you are, be happy with what you have, and just try to be the best you that you can be. Super cheesy, I know, but it's actually really true. And in the end, you'll be a lot happier. I always do see comments that say, Hess must be rich because he has all these sneakers and he just buys all these shoes and they're so expensive, but he has all these shoes. I have to put in work in, in order to earn the things that I want. So I work quite a bit. I have a couple different part-time jobs as well as a full-time job. And I did a full detailed video years ago on how I earn money uh, for sneakers. And if you guys wanna check that video, I'll, ch I'll link it in the description. But those are kind of my five essential tips for new sneakerheads in 2018. Again, anybody out there that wants to leave a comment and let me know how they got started into sneakers, put your story in the comment section and I can't wait to see the, what you guys post. If you guys have other video suggestions in the future geared more towards newer sneakerheads, leave those comments because I want to start trying to include you guys more in um, the videos that I end up creating. Again, hopefully this video was somewhat helpful. Thank you again for watching. We will catch you guys for some more sneaker videos soon. Peace, guys.